Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we'll study the sort of the last type of functions, which is we'll study the last type of functions in this series of functions that we've been studying. These are the inverse hyperbolic functions. We saw trigonometric functions, uh, their derivatives and all that, and then the inverse trigonometric functions, and their derivatives ended up being some rational forms and square roots and all that, and then we could use that in integration. Likewise, the inverse hyperbolic functions also are uh, quite useful. So, let us see them. Uh, the first is how do you compute the inverse, right? So, uh, we will start with the inverse of cosine and sine hyperbolic functions. y equals cosine hyperbolic function is e power x plus e power minus x by 2. x can be any real number, but you know y goes from 1 to infinity, right? So, if you take a particular value uh, for, so, so supposing you call t equals e power x, I am just computing the inverse here. So, if you, if you let e power x be t, then you notice here that this y equals t plus 1 by t by 2, right? So, basically you get a quadratic equation in t. You can rewrite this as 2y will go here and then multiply throughout by t, you will get t squared plus 1 equals 2yt and then you can bring it to this side, you get t squared minus 2yt plus 1 is 0, okay? This is a small manipulation of this. So, once t becomes e power x, you notice that this becomes a quadratic equation in t and you can solve this quadratic equation and you get e power x which is t is 2y plus whatever the same uh, quadratic equation formula, you get y plus root of y squared minus 1. So, notice y is greater than 1, so this y squared minus 1 is always positive. I could take the negative square root here, but I will stick with the positive square root for the inverse. I could pick any one, it is uh, both are okay. So, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. So, and then e power x uh, is this, so x is log of y plus root of y squared minus 1. You know e power x and log are inverses of each other. So, you notice that cos hyperbolic x has log in it and then some function of y. It is not very surprising, right? It has got e power x here, so log should come and then it has got this function of e power x in a quadratic way, so you should get a form in this way, okay? Okay, so what is cos inverse x? It is uh, log of x plus root of x squared minus 1 and the range of values of x, the domain of this function x, x takes values in the range 1 to infinity and it goes from 0 to infinity. Okay. You can also take the negative of this and you will get the minus uh, of that, but this is okay. Okay, So, I hope uh, uh, maybe I should show you this. This is, I mean, in case you are confused about uh, that negative part. So, if you look at 1 by x minus root of x squared minus 1, if you multiply and divide by x plus root of x squared minus 1, x plus root of x squared minus 1, Okay, right, 1 by x minus root of x squared minus 1 equals this, which equals x plus root of x squared minus 1, right? So, divided by, if you want, you can see this is a plus b, a minus, a plus b, a minus b. So, it is x squared minus x squared minus 1 and this will become just 1, okay? So, you have x plus root of x squared minus 1. So, this, uh, so, so if you take, uh, you know, x minus 1 by square root of x squared minus 1, it is reciprocal is x plus root of x squared minus 1. So, whether you take plus here or minus here, you will get the negative of this. So, you may take the negative form, usually people take the positive. Here, you remember the cos hyperbolic function plot, no, it looks like that. So, any inverse can be either on the positive side or on the negative side. Cos, cos hyperbolic is even, is not it? So, you can do this. By a very similar operation, you just start with sin, sin is e power x minus e power minus x by 2, sin hyperbolic and you do the very similar steps, you will get sin, sin hyperbolic inverses log x plus root of x square plus 1 and this goes from real number to real number, all reals to all reals, okay? So, there is no need to remember all these things by heart, I mean all these things you will find on the internet very easily, so you can look it up whenever you want, this is just to show you that these inverses uh, can be easily computed. We will be interested in the derivatives of these inverses and using the simple properties of log and all this, you can compute the derivative very nicely. Okay, so now the rest of the functions, I am not going to go into great detail. They all have inverses, they can all be computed. There will be some domain and range. Tan, for instance, is minus 1, 1, 2 real numbers and it is half log 1 plus x by 1 minus x and log is involved and some function rational form of x is involved in this and the ranges vary depending on what uh, uh, hyperbolic function you are inverting. So, this is inverse. Once again, no need to remember this except, you know, you should know that these inverses exist. Okay. So, now derivatives uh, for the hyperbolic functions, we have already seen this and tan hyperbolic is secant, secant hyperbolic square, cot hyperbolic is minus cosecant hyperbolic square 
and then uh, similarly with secant and cosecant and this, this is just a straightforward uh, formulae and uh, you know just derivatives uh, using the uh, you know, quotient rule and product rule and composition rule and all that. Okay? So, for the inverse hyperbolic functions, uh, the derivatives become uh, very interesting, you know the derivative of uh, cos uh, inverse uh, hyperbolic is actually 1 by root x squared minus 1, sin hyperbolic is 1 by root x squared plus 1 and tan hyperbolic, cot hyperbolic and all the, you get rational forms. Okay, so that is a nice nice thing to know and then 1 by x root 1 minus x square also you get rational forms and there is various ranges for x uh, but all of that uh, you can easily figure out like for instance if it is 1 by 1 minus x squared uh, mod x is going to be less than 1. Uh, okay, so there is some mistake here both of these uh, okay, both of these are the same except the range of x is different. This mod x is less than 1 here and mod x is greater than 1 here for the tan, tan hyperbolic inverse and cot hyperbolic inverse. So, you see it just varies uh, depending on. So, if you have square root of 1 minus x squared clearly x will be only between 0 and 1 and otherwise it will be uh, you will have expressions of this form. Okay. So, again once again no need to remember this uh, except you should you should have this sense for instance if you have an integral of the form dx by square root of a squared minus x squared you do something called the trigonometric substitution. This is a very famous substitution. You may do x equals a sin u. You can also do x equals a tan u, that is also possible, but that is a different form. But this for square root of a square minus x square, you do x equals a sin u. This is the one that will work. So, if you do this, dx is a cos u du, right? This is just the derivation. And then when you make the substitution, you get dx by root x square minus x square, a cos u du divided by root of a square minus a square sin square u and here there will be a cancellation, right? So, because a square will come out, you will get a here, a will cancel with this and root of 1 minus sin square u is nothing but cos u and that will cancel and this whole integral just becomes u, okay? Integral of 1 du and that is just u and what is u? u is sin inverse x by a, okay? So, using this trigonometric substitution, this integral, you can find an antiderivative for this guy and that is sin inverse x by a plus c. Okay, this is an antiderivative for 1 by root a square minus x square. Okay, likewise, very similarly, there is a hyperbolic substitution. For here, you have 1 by root of a square plus x square, right? So, there you had minus x square, here you have plus x square. When you have plus, you are supposed to put x equals a sin hyperbolic u and you will get uh, dx is this and it goes through the same process and you remember cos hyperbolic square minus sin hyperbolic square is 1. Uh, yeah, so, so, so square root of 1 plus sin hyperbolic square works out as cos hyperbolic and you get u and that is sin h inverse. So, you can find the antiderivative for 1 by root a square plus x square and that is sin hyperbolic inverse x by a plus c, okay? So, that is a straightforward little computation. So, here is uh, a bunch of formulae that you may get using the inverse hyperbolic functions, a lot of antiderivatives of different forms, you know, 1 by x root a square minus x square, 1 by a square minus x square, all of these things. Uh, you can find uh, antiderivatives quite easily. So, in fact, 1 by a square minus x square and 1 by a square minus x square for mod x less than a, mod x greater than a, you can also do using other methods. Partial fraction expansion will give you, but this is also one possibility. But square roots, uh, these are uh, more difficult. Okay, notice the sign of x enters the picture here and that is uh, that's got to do with the way cos hyperbolic inverse has to be defined suitably. Okay. So, that is uh, the hyperbolic function and I mean this is just for you to know that you know these forms can be integrated and uh, you may be able to solve problems like this and uh, you know in, in closed form using sin hyperbolic inverse and, and uh, you know uh, keeping with our tradition of using scientific tools whenever we can, uh, I am going to show you uh, how one can do this in, okay. So, you can see this. So, we will use the SymPy package and I will do my init printing. It will take a minute or so to connect and get started. Okay, so now it's running. It's done. Okay, so the next piece of code, I'm going to define x to be symbols of x, and then I'm going to define uh, uh, integrate a function comma x, but the function is going to be. Let's take this function that we have here, square root of x squared minus one. 
okay, SQRT x into x minus 1. Okay, so let us run this. There you go, out comes the answer. You know, I mean, it is it's, these tools are so easy to use and you do not have to really remember all the techniques here and the technique may involve uh, some careful substitution and all sorts of things, but you get the answer uh, quite reasonably and you may, you may, you, you, may, you might suspect same thing is true here everywhere. So, maybe we can try, uh, what do you want to try? The last one x root x squared minus 1. So, that seems like a easy enough thing. Let us run this guy. There you go. The answer is very straightforward for x root x squared minus 1. Uh, you can also try square root of 9 minus x squared. Let us try that one. SQRT 9 minus x squared. So, anything like this that you want. If you know SymPy and this simple little formula, you, you look, look at this A sin inverse shows up here and uh, you get that with this. You have to do this trigonometric substitution. And uh, maybe this one square root of, I am hoping there will be a sin hyperbolic function or something, but it is not coming out. Uh, 1 plus x squared by x squared, let us try that one. 1 plus x squared by x by x. Okay, let us try this guy. There you go, you got a sin hyperbolic. Notice that sin hyperbolic inverse of x minus square root of x squared plus 1 by x. So these are all done using some either trigonometric substitution or hyperbolic substitution depending on one of the properties it satisfies and these are important techniques sometimes it is useful to know them uh, but you know the tools that we have today can help you get them okay. So this concludes my, uh, my look at the functions and various characteristics we saw a lot of functions and the most important thing about these functions is uh, quite often when you observe a phenomenon you, you might see a relationship between two quantities. And you might want to come up with a function that fits that well and you want that function to have good properties. You want it to be differentiable, you want it to be smooth and all that. So when you know your functions really, really well, all their characteristics, uh, you will be able to easily uh, do that if you want to and, or otherwise also if somebody is modeling various phenomena with these functions, you should be comfortable by looking at those functions, knowing what they are, where they come from and how to use them. Okay, thank you very much.